I'm Anne Marie Lipinski. I'm the curator of the Neiman Foundation for Journalism, and it is such a joy to welcome you all to the Walter Lippmann House uh, for the presentation of the J. Anthony Lucas Prize Project Awards. Um, the prize honors the best of American nonfiction book writing, work that exemplifies the literary grace and commitment to serious research and to social concern that characterize the work of um, <clears throat> Our, our, our namesake, the awards namesake. In celebrating our gifted winners this evening, we remember Pulitzer Prize winning author and journalist J. Anthony Lucas, who was also a 1969 Neiman Fellow, and the late Mark Linton, a history enthusiast and senior executive at the firm Hunter Douglas in the Netherlands. Uh, Linton's wife, Marion, and children, Lily and Michael, established the Mark Linton History Prize and have generously sponsored the Lucas Prize Project since its creation. We are honored um, to have Lily and Michael with us tonight and uh, their family members, Michael Ryan, Claire, and Jamie Alter Linton. So welcome to you all. Thank you for being here. We also welcome um, the prize board members who are here, uh, our chair, Jonathan Alter, uh, Shay Earhart, Colin Diver, Linda Healy, Pamela Paul, and Abby Wright. So good to have all of you here. Um, and as many of you would know, judging book prizes is extraordinarily challenging and time consuming and guaranteed to secure you the affection of the few who win and nothing from the many who do not. Um, we had a record number of entries this year and on behalf of the prize board, uh, I want to offer special gratitude to all of our jurors, most of whom are with us tonight. Dale Russikoff, Amy Goldstein, Elizabeth Taylor, Annette Gordon-Reed, David Greenberg, John Duff, and Lucas Whitman, thank you all very much. Um, thanks also to uh, Neiman's Christine Kane, Carrie Cashmore, and Columbia's Caroline Martinet for so smoothly engineering the convening of all of you, so many smart, um, busy, and interesting people. Uh, a word, if I could, about the man for whom these prizes are named. Tony Lucas began the career that would distinguish him as one of the country's master storytellers while here at Harvard as an undergraduate reporter at the Harvard Crimson. And then, of course, when he returned to campus as a Neiman Fellow, um, he would go on to win two Pulitzer Prizes, the first in 1968 for a story he wrote while a reporter at the New York Times. It was called The Two Worlds of Linda Fitzpatrick. And it was an investigative piece about a Connecticut teenager whose wealthy family had no knowledge of her drug habits until she and her boyfriend were found beaten to death. His second Pulitzer came 18 years later for Common Ground, a turbulent decade in the lives of three American families. And that, of course, is Lucas's landmark work about school desegregation and busing in Boston. It is hard to overstate the power of that book which holds a place of distinction in our library here of Neiman Fellows work. And it is also for many journalists who I know the standard bearer for deeply reported, long, reported long form narrative. One of Lucas's great gifts I think was his ability to pair the common with the combustible. Uh, there is always a fine tension running beneath the most mundane moments. And I think that writing in that book must well characterize what it felt like to live in Boston during that period. Um, one of my favorite chapters, if you're going to pick a chapter to start with, um, is chapter 24, and it's called The Editor. And um, for the journalists and journalism junkies in the room, it is this um, chapter that explores uh, a very important character in the book, and that's the Boston Globe. And um, what starts with a night guard, a night watchman, reading the newspaper fresh off the press turns into this kind of high octane examination of what covering race and busing was like, not just in the city of Boston, but what it felt like in that newsroom. Um, and it's, it's brilliant. Um, Tony published five important books, each an examination of a critical rift in America's social and political landscape, each seen through the lens of individuals caught up in the tides of change. To do this, he brought an intense focus to the reporting, 
During work for Common Ground, he abandoned one family midway through the seven-year project and focused on another because his first choice, he said, was not working dramatically. He was absolutely brilliant, David Halberstam said. He took journalism to a high, to a new high intellectual level, yet he also had the doggedness of an old-fashioned police reporter. Um, at a memorial for him, uh, Colin Diver, who, are, who I think, there he is, hi Colin, um, who's with us tonight and who, um, for those of you who've read the book, you know that um, Colin is a major character in um, Tony's book. And um, I read your uh, eulogy um, that I thought was just extraordinary, and I'm just going to offer a little quote from that tonight. Um, he listened without judgment, without accusation. He helped us to peel away scarred layers of frustration and judgment. In the excruciating, almost obsessive precision of his research, he reminded us of the cleansing power of truth. In his relish, relish for the richness of his material, he taught us there can be a richness, even a kind of nobility, in the ordinariness of everyday life. The year following his death in 1997, his widow, Linda Healy, joined with friends and colleagues to honor his memory by creating the Lucas Prize Project. We thank Linda, the Linton family, and our partners at the Columbia Journalism School for these awards, which we um, happily embrace as a way to showcase exceptional narrative work in book form and, of course, to remember an esteemed Neiman Fellow. Um, I would now like to invite Steve Call to join me for the awards presentation. Steve, as you know, is the Dean of Columbia Journalism School and the Henry Luce Professor of Journalism there. He is the winner of two Pulitzer Prizes for reporting at the Washington Post and also for his book, Ghost Wars.